knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. In the previous tutorial, we introduced phylum nematoda, or the roundworms, in a general way. Now it's time to get a closer look at some of the parasitic nematodes. As a warning, in this tutorial, we are going to focus entirely on nematodes that parasitize humans. There will be some fairly graphic images and detailed descriptions that may be off-putting to some viewers. Also, if you believe you may be experiencing some of the symptoms that are described, please seek counseling from a licensed medical provider. Keep in mind that the majority of nematodes are free-living or non-parasitic, and quite a few species are essential to the environment, humanity, and science. For context, there are over 25,000 described species of nematodes and only about 35 or so parasitize humans. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on just seven roundworm species and groups. Those are the human intestinal roundworm, pinworms, hookworms, trichina worms, guinea worms, filarial worms, and dog roundworms. The intestinal roundworm, Ascaris lumbricoides, is an extremely common roundworm species that parasitizes humans. Globally, about 1 billion people are likely to have an intestinal roundworm at any given time, though this is more common in countries without adequate sanitation and sterilization facilities. Intestinal roundworms live in the small intestines of their hosts. Adult females can grow to sizes of 30 centimeters in length and produce 200,000 eggs a day, which leave the host through the feces. These eggs, while extremely durable and tolerant to a lack of oxygen and moisture, are easily killed by direct sunlight and high temperatures. If the eggs are accidentally consumed, usually through infected food, they hatch and burrow through the intestinal wall and into the blood, eventually making their way to the heart, then to the lungs, and to the trachea, then the pharynx where they are swallowed and brought back into the stomach to complete their development. There, they feed on intestinal contents and mature in a matter of two months after initial ingestion. Most humans parasitized by intestinal roundworms are unaware since their infection is rarely fatal, though in large numbers they can be deadly. Infection can also lead to abdominal pain, allergic reactions, and blockage. Pinworms are one of the most common worm parasites in the world. Right now, at this very moment, at least 1 billion people are currently infected with pinworms. Likely, well over 10% of the U.S. population is currently infected, and some experts place that number much higher. However, they are most common in children under 18 and their caretakers. This is because adult parasites live in the large intestine and cecum. Females, which are only about 12 millimeters in length, migrate to the anal cavity at night to lay eggs. This causes an itch that, when scratched, contaminates the hands and bedclothes. If the microscopic eggs are accidentally swallowed, they infect the host and develop rapidly, within six hours at human body temperature, hatching in the large intestine. They can continually infect the same host or easily spread through hand-to-hand -hand contact. Infection is easily prevented through regular hand washing, daily underwear changes, showers, and frequent changing of bedding. A range of prescription drugs and over-the-counter medicine exist for their treatment, though most infections are mild and pass without the host knowing, once proper sanitation is restored. Humans are their only host. They do not infect any other animals. Hookworms are so named because their anterior region curves dorsally, resembling a hook. More than half a million people in the world are likely infected by hookworms. As adults, they use the plates in their mouths to attach to the intestinal lining of the host, where they suck and pump blood through their intestine. Heavy infections can cause anemia and reduce growth and development in children. Like the intestinal roundworms, their eggs pass in fecal matter, but unlike the intestinal roundworms or pinworms, the eggs hatch within the soil and live on bacteria, like free-living roundworms. However, unlike the free-living roundworms, if human skin comes in contact with infected soil, these juveniles can turn parasitic and burrow into the skin to the blood, and then the lungs, where they are coughed up into the pharynx and swallowed very much like the intestinal roundworm. 
Trichina worms are a genus with numerous species of microscopic nematodes known to cause the potentially deadly disease trichinosis, and about 10,000 cases are reported annually. They are widespread in both wild and domestic populations of mammals, though a few species parasitize wild birds and crocodiles. Adult worms and encysted larvae develop within a single vertebrate host, and an infected animal serves as a definitive host and potential intermediate host. They are passed to humans through the consumption of raw or poorly cooked meat, often pig, bear, or moose, that contains encysted juveniles that reside within nurse cells. Upon hatching, juveniles penetrate blood vessels, where they are carried around the body and eventually to skeletal muscle cells, where they cause a redirection of gene expression in their host cell, forcing it to become a nurse cell that feeds the worm. The guinea worm is responsible for causing dracunculiasis, a neglected tropical disease that mainly affects poor communities in parts of Africa and Asia that lack access to safe drinking water or consume under or uncooked fish. Technically, it spreads through infected copepods, microscopic crustaceans that, when consumed, die in the stomach and release the juvenile worms. Unlike some other roundworm parasites, infection by guinea worms is very painful, and full-grown female worms physically leave the body, typically through the lower leg, causing excruciating pain. Thankfully, a great deal of progress has been made in the eradication of the guinea worm, led by the Carter Center and the International Task for Disease Eradication that started their eradication effort in 1986, when there were about 3.5 million cases reported in 21 countries in Africa and Asia. In 2022, there were only 13 reported human cases from four countries. Like the guinea worm, filarial worms also cause debilitating diseases. There are at least eight species of filarial worms that infect humans, and unfortunately they infect around 120 million people in tropical countries. They generally live in the lymphatic system and can cause inflammation and obstructions. Sexually mature females release live young, known as microfilarii, into the bloodstream. There, they are accidentally ingested by mosquitoes that act as a secondary host where the young develop. Then, when and if the mosquito is able to bite again, they escape into the wound and migrate via the lymphatic system to a regional lymph node where they develop to sexual maturity, mate, and give birth to microfilarii. Long and repeated exposure to some filarial worms can cause elephantiasis, which is visible due to an excessive growth of connective tissue leading to enormous swelling of affected parts. Another species causes river blindness and is carried by black flies. Yet another species, the dog heartworm, is also carried by mosquitoes but mainly infects canids, cats, ferrets, and sea lions. In the Midwestern United States, for example, it likely infects up to 45% of all domestic dogs. Unfortunately, filarial worms aren't the only roundworms that impact dogs. The dog and cat roundworms of genus Toxocara can be extremely common in dogs and even transmit to humans through contact and accidental consumption of infected fecal matter. Humans can be infected by this roundworm just by stroking an infected dog's fur and accidentally ingesting infective eggs that may be present. In domestic dogs and cats, it develops in the small intestine. In humans, it can develop in the back of the eye, causing blindness, or in the liver or lungs. Like many roundworms, infection can be greatly reduced through proper sanitation and frequent hand washing. Infected animals can spread eggs in their feces or through vertical transmission where pregnant hosts can pass the infection directly to their offspring when wandering juvenile worms infect the embryos, meaning some puppies and kittens are born infected. And that wraps up our survey of parasitic nematodes and nematodes in general. But we're not quite done with parasites yet. Let's move forward and examine the only entirely parasitic animal phylum, Nematomorpha, the horsehair worms. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.